Greetings, viewers. My name is Christian Barker. Thank you for uh, for joining us today. And um, and yeah, today on Instagram Live, I am fortunate enough to be speaking with um, with a gentleman from uh, from Florence, Italy, named Tommaso Milani. Now, Tommaso, um, his family for several generations has run the uh, preeminent uh, leatherworking school in um, in Florence. And Florence, of, of course, is. Uh, is famous for its uh, for its leather goods, uh, for its fine quality leather goods, um, and yeah, uh, a number of years ago, uh, Tommaso at the uh, at the behest of the uh, the widow of the late great shoemaker Stefano Bima um, stepped in to uh, to help that uh, that brand uh, continue on after the uh, tragic uh, early passing of uh, its eponymous founder, Mr. Stefano Bima. Um, so yeah, today we'll be uh, we'll be chatting with uh, with Tommaso about. Um, well, about uh, about everything he's uh, he's doing, both with the uh, with the school, um, with uh, with Stefano Bima, and um, also he's uh, he just recently um, in another uh, collaboration has uh, has partnered up with one of the uh, the preeminent uh, uh, tailors in uh, in Florence and is really keeping the Florentine tailoring school alive um, with a tailor called uh, Loris Vestrucci, whose uh, whose house is known as Sartoria. Vestrucci. Um, so Tommaso, if you're there, please do uh, please do join us. Hit the uh, request to join button. I've just had a message uh, a few moments ago from Tommaso, so I know he is uh, he is watching um, and uh, and should be with us any moment now. Um, meanwhile, it's a it's a rainy, stormy day here in uh, in Singapore uh, today, but it's. Uh, it's 5 p.m. on a Friday, so uh, easing into the weekend, which will be hugely different. I just don't know where I'm going to go this weekend. Could be going to the kitchen, could be going to the living room, could be going to the bedroom. Um, what surprises and adventures await? We shall see. Um, Tommaso, are you there? You might have to jump off and, and jump back on. I'm... Uh, Technical difficulties in the exciting, fast-paced world of Instagram Live. Anyway, thank you everyone for your for your patience and for uh, hopping on and joining us. Hello there, Toby. Ah, here we are. Just still trying to get Tommaso board here. Sorry, be patient, please. Hello there, Toby. Hello back to uh, Josh and Scarlett. Yeah, so, um, all right, just getting you up uh, Yeah, here we should have Tommaso. Connecting right this moment. Gradually, gradually coming through. I should say this is a water, it's, it's not a gigantic glass of, uh, of vodka or gin. It's a Friday. Seems to be a little bit of a delay in connecting, could be an issue with the Wi-Fi on one of our ends. Just 
Should we try again, Tommaso? Just to, yeah, didn't, didn't connect that time. Trying again. Once again, thank you for sticking around, everyone. Much appreciated. Just trying to get connected to Tommaso right now. Hello there, Fahad. Hello, Darren. Hello, Toby. Ah, here we go. Hey. No, no worries. Hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Got you. Technology. Glad, glad we've got you. <laughs> Lovely to see you again, my friend. How are things? Uh, well, given the circumstances yeah. that we all, of course, are familiar with, uh, everything's fine. I mean, I, it's, yeah. um, it's a surreal new normality, but it's normality anyways. Yeah. Well, you, you're looking good. You're looking very dapper. And, uh, Thank you. Schedule and Friday. By looks, yeah. <laughs> by the looks of things, the, uh, well, we're kind of dressed to match. Um, but by the looks of things, the, um, the store is, uh, is back open. Is that right? Yes, actually, we opened up uh, two weeks ago already. Oh, really? Um, we, I mean, we we were under lockdown. Uh, thank God, most of the of the stuff could be somehow managed uh, even from home. Like uh, m many of our artisans brought some stuff back home to keep working on it, and uh, so we never really froze. Um, yeah. But we were all glad that we could be back in the in the in the workshop at some point because, like, working from home, it's uh it kind of makes you too relaxed probably over things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I understand that, um, you know, I'm sure the bespoke business was, uh, was still able to be carried on. As you say, uh, your, your craftspeople could uh, bring their ongoing projects home and, uh, and work from, uh, from home on those. But um, as for the remainder of, of the business, was there uh, a great deal of, of sort of disruption or, or interruption to uh, yes. Uh, to your production. Uh, there was a de there was a delay. Obviously, I mean, uh, the, the 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 part that needs more teamwork uh, and uh, obviously that had to be put on uh, on hold for uh, for almost two months. Um, mm -hmm. So now we're we're really trying to catch up with orders. All of our clients have been like extremely supporting, saying no worry. I mean, uh, you know delays happens and obviously it's not your fault blah 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 so it, it, they've been really really nice to us uh we're trying to catch up and um and and strangely enough uh march has been one of the best months ever for us uh in terms of uh, online sales okay. um so the support from our clients has been extremely extremely nice and extremely appreciated of course are you hearing from, uh, you know, there are a lot of people around the world, uh, United States, Australia, Japan, um, UK, et cetera, et cetera, who have a great affection for Italy and, um, and you know, have, um, have been really, um, you know, wanting to show support uh, in any way uh, that we can for uh, um, the, the great hardship that, uh, that Italy has been, has been going through. Um, have, have you had feedback from uh, from customers that that you know they're, they're, they wish to support you in any way that they can? Hey, sorry. Did did did, did you yeah. lose that? I, I was basically no, saying. No, no, no. Have you I been got hearing it. from customers around the world that they want to support Italy? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, many, many. Uh, Japan, uh, uh, even Australia, as you, as you mentioned. Uh, and North America have been uh, uh, very into um, knowing what was going on. Obviously, I mean, Italy was the first country being hit by the pandemic, and, uh, and we didn't know much about it uh, at the time. Uh, and they were generally concerned about, like, us and, and things in Italy. Uh, a client even started, like, um, like a, a raising uh, funds for poor people, in Italy, like from from New York, which was like really touching in a, in a way, but you know, from Florence, I would say like, oh no, everything's fine. We have food, we have everything. It's just yeah. you know, we're, we're in. It's, uh, but uh, no, definitely, uh, we've been we've been 
at the center of the attention of, of, of people, uh, probably because again, we were the first uh, in this incredible, crazy experience. Um, but, uh, but they've been very nice, very supportive, very, very kind uh, with their words and their, and, and their actions. Uh, so I, I was, it's, it's an interesting part because like I normally am, I'm well aware that this, the relationship between uh, this kind of product and us and the client is not just business. We don't just sell shoes. We establish uh, a personal relationship with many of them. And there's a, there's a personal experience in interacting with, with, with a product and a brand like this. But I didn't think it would go to that extent that you actively uh, reach out to your shoemaker to see, hey, uh, is everything fine? We're hearing about Florence and, mm. and Milano. Like, it, that, was, that was refreshing. I mean, it, it's a, it was a confirmation if, if I needed one, but it was a confirmation that the, this relationship is real and it's not just in, in, in my imagination. <laughs> yeah, it's not just business. It's not just straight yep. business. Well, I, I don't know whether you, you caught my, uh, my introduction, but I, uh, I gave a little bit of a, um, for those who don't know you and who, who perhaps don't know your background, I, I gave a little bit of an um, introduction about the fact that, you know, your family has, has run the, the leading leatherwork um, school in, in Florence for, uh, for quite some time, for some generations, um, and that, uh, you know, that followed on into, uh, into your association with... Um, uh, with Stefano Bima, um, who, who tragically passed away um, rather young, and at the behest of, of his wife, um, you came aboard to, or his widow, I should say, you came aboard to uh, help continue um, the company name. And I, I also explained about uh, your, your recent, more recent um, association with uh, Sartoria Vestrucci and trying to keep the, uh, endeavoring to keep the Florentine School of Tailoring. Um, Alive, so you know, I'd love to touch on on all of those subjects with you uh, today, Tommaso. Um, but look, let's let's perhaps start with um, with the school, and and I imagine that um, that the school has been has been slightly, well, or, or you know, uh, has has been shut down for a for a couple of months. Um, but perhaps you could give a little bit of background about about the school and the work that it does, and uh, and yeah, where where things are going there. All right. Um, well, yes, the school is the training in general has been part of, of our uh, strategy since the very beginning of my involvement with with uh, Stefan Weber back in two, uh, 2012. Uh, as you said, from the experience of my family leather business uh, training is uh, that was, you know, the very core of, of the company there. And I decided to make it the the core of the company, uh, even at Stefan Weber. So through the training uh, every year we we have an intake actually two intakes every year uh, so we welcome between uh, anywhere between 20 and 24 norm, uh, students in a, in a normal year um, and uh, i say normal because the last two years haven't been normal for different reasons so last year uh, we decided to, yeah. to to run a full renovation of of the uh, of this workshop um, you've been here long time ago you may not remember the hmm. the 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 layout as it was i walk you through around it if you if you want later uh so you can see how it looks sure. now yeah. um and so the second intake last year had to be cancelled uh, due to those renovations and uh, and the intake that started in late january right after pt womo uh, the infamous uh, winter Pitti Uomo uh, that introduced uh, the COVID as well to Florence. Um, right after that, we, we froze uh, at the middle of March uh, and, and all of the students, with the exception of, of one, uh, have decided uh, rightfully to return to their own countries, uh, especially because they had no idea how long it would last. Uh, so we were Obviously, not able to complete the class. We'll start a new intake in August. Uh, hopefully, if everything goes goes right, we will have the chance to complete the training for those that left and and start the training for new students. Uh, but it is uh, indeed a, a, a difficult moment, especially because the all the regulations about like distancing and uh, use of shared spaces. As you as you know, our our spaces and our mission in the training is, is a loft so we all 
uh, yep. work in the same environment because uh, it's a, the, not only the teamwork is crucial to uh, to the flow of things, but also the learning through uh, examples of what others are, are doing and making is, is really important to us. So um, up to two new realities. And I want to say that new reality doesn't, exists as of yet. Of course, we all try to wear masks and uh, we have sanitizers everywhere and it gets vacuumed and, and, and steamed and uh, all sorts of, of sanitifications that are, that are required. But I must admit that, you know, nobody really knows much about this thing yet. I mean, it's like every day you hear a different thing or, or there's a different norm to, to prevent the, the spread of the virus. My personal feeling is that we all end up getting in touch with it and uh, the herd immunization will, will take place. That's, uh, that's well, my let's take. hope so. But I'm, I'm interested to, you know, your remarks that, that most of your students um, or most of the, the apprentice shoemakers have, you know, come, come from overseas, um, have, have come from, from elsewhere to, uh, to study and, and learn that craft with you. Um, which, which I think is, is really remarkable. And I'm, I'm curious, you know, in speaking to those students, what do they, what do they generally say is, the, is their motivation for, uh, uh, for coming and, and, uh, and, and studying to become shoemakers? Uh, and why do they specifically, you know, wish to do so in, in Florence and to, um, and to learn in the, uh, under the Stefano Bima um, name? Um. Okay, well, there's, I, I, I do believe there's different motivations uh, that come to the decision of, of, of learning shoemaking. First of all, you start for passion. This is a, as a job that you only do if you really love it. If you don't love it, 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 it it's, it's demanding, it's harsh. I mean, you're, you're working bent most of the day. Uh, it, it's it's uh, time consuming, energy consuming, and consuming so it's a it's a it's a tough job but uh, and i was t talking about it just the other day with my own master craftsman saying i would never be a, a good craftsman just because i don't have the patient spirit i mean i am just not driven to the beauty of the act of shoemaking or any making if if, if you wish i just uh, I don't know. I just like developing ideas. I'm, I'm more creative than repetitive as a, as a, as a personality. Um, those that come here, um, I do believe that they come with the personal and specific aim um, in mind. Uh, and it's slightly different. Some of them um, are more driven to the craft. And that doesn't really matter whether they get to, uh, in the end, use their acquire skills with a shoemaker or become shoemakers, independent shoemakers on their own. Others come with a specific project. Um, they know exactly what they want to do in life, where they want to do it, what they want to sell, where they want to make it. Um, and those are the ones that I try to support even more because for me, like, you know, the more quality in general there is in the world, uh, especially in the world of shoemaking, the better chances for us shoemakers, uh, quality shoemakers, uh, mm -hmm. there are because the education of the client takes place through examples. So I, I want to say that right now we have a um, very, very, very talented Russian uh, student here. Uh, and his goal is obviously to go back to uh, his country and then start his own business. And, and Russia is obviously a country of wealth and, uh, and their learning curve in terms of uh, quality and refinement is, is speeding up even, even, even more now that they are kind of abandoning larger, big uh, brands. Yeah. Uh, so for, for us, having uh, someone that can actually profess the quality of shoemaking in the country, even if it's, of course, selling his own shoes, but it's, it's an education on consumers. Mm. So for us, it's, it's not opening the market to us, it's opening the market to shoemaking, which, which, yeah. is, which is a, a mission on its own. And, and it's even more important to our own commercial venture in, in the specific country. So when I find that kind of an, a motivation, I always take extra care of that project to make sure that they do know what to do, or at least 
uh, I try to help understanding what to do in, in that sense. Um, and then I'm, I'm flattered to say that many come with the idea that they would like to be shoemakers with us. Mm -hmm. uh, that said, the reason may, may one of the uh, probably the biggest reason why they come here to Florence and started with us is probably because we are one of the very few shoemakers that have a training program in place. And a training program is different f from an apprenticeship, uh, meaning we follow a specific a, a specific path. There's a gradual uh, increase in in their in the in the skills they acquire, and uh, and we test their skills, and that's so they, they can progress uh, gradually and and steadily. Um, so I want to say, in the six months of our of our main uh, training program, they achieve uh, uh, levels that in you, you would never be able to achieve in this, you know by apprenticing for six months with a shoemaker, just because. Um, you see random things when you're apprenticing while in a training program, you, you go really from, from A to Z in, in the making of things. And that makes a lot of sense. And especially in improving each single step, it, it's much easier to suggest what to improve. Okay. Amazing. Well, doing, uh, doing brilliant work there. And, um, and, and, you know, I, I guess, uh, a smooth segue on from there to, uh, to the work that's going on at, uh, at Vestrucci, um, where, you know, when I came in and saw you uh, nearly, nearly a year ago, you explained that, uh, that similarly, it's, um, um, you know, uh, Loris Vestrucci, who is a, you know, 80, 80 year old gentleman uh, or thereabouts, right? Um, yep. And is, is, you know, is passing on all of those, uh, all of those skills. So is, is that, um, is that still, uh, or, or is, has that process um, been interrupted at all or disrupted or, uh, or is, are, are we moving ahead nicely with that? Um, it started nicely and we were lucky enough to take it like, to have a very high level. With, with uh, Lodis Vestrucci, the, the, the deal was a little different, meaning we had to first create the first layer of artisans that were able to be uh, depositaries of of uh, of uh, Lori's craft and vision and skills, uh, so we couldn't start right away with uh, uh, with the training itself. We had to really train a new apprentice to understand Lori's and Lori's technique. Mm -hmm. uh, that happened. Uh, it took two and a half years, uh, and I'm, I'm glad to say that uh, Hachon, which is now um, our leading maker uh, in in the Sartoria um, finally like took over the concept of the Vestucci jacket and construction and and technique. When the COVID unfortunately came, Loris being eighty, I I had to shelter him right away. I mean, it's uh, um, I I can't take chances for the for the men obviously way before <laughs> way before the yeah. tailor. But uh, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm too attached to, to the person to allow, he would come obviously, but uh, yeah. you know, it's, uh, it's a different generation. It's please, a generation that has Lawrence. seen, yeah. that has seen World War II. Uh, yeah. So when you, when you hear about a pandemic, you've seen worse and this, you can really see it. It's not visible. So uh, the, and I have the same problem with the, with the, my parents, like the, yeah. the, the idea is that you know you don't see it can be that bad. So uh, I I really yeah. had to shelter all of them, <laughs> make sure that you know your your ground you can't you can't leave the house. <laughs> I imagine I imagine. Well, for for those who are um, unfamiliar with uh, with Vestrucci and the um, and the Florentine school of uh, of tailoring, or but but the, although I think. Vestrucci is, 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 you know, unique. Um, how would you describe the, um, the qualities or the, uh, the style, the house style, or, or you know, the particular uh, qualities in construction of uh, Vestrucci's tailoring? Okay. Um, well, I'm, I'm no expert. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm passionate about it, but I've never been an expert in tailoring. Uh, mm. And that's part of the reason why I got into into building the Vestrucci uh, mission, uh, it was because he wanted to retire. And I thought, 
it was a shame to not leave a legacy behind. Uh, so Lodi started when he was 11 and he's 80, he'll turn 81 this year. So uh, you, yeah, you, nice. you, you can do your math. And uh, he is the last uh, Florentine tailor that was born, uh, raised, trained in Florence by Flor and trained by Florentine masters. Um, meaning other tailors that are in, in uh, working here came to Florence as tailors uh, and they adopted the Florentine technique and style, uh, which is unique as, as you obviously well know for the lack of the, of the front dart on the jacket. So it's a different construction. The, the, all the shaping of the jacket is made with the pattern uh, <clears throat> rather than using the, it's called the shortcut of pinching the, the, the cloth. So it, it sits on your, on your hips and it touches your, your waist. Uh, in the Florentine, it's done with one diagonal uh, cut uh, from the armhole to the, to the pocket, to the side. And uh, I, I, I don't know exactly why it started. I wanna, I wanna think that because Florence has always been so proud of itself and, and the beauty and balance of, of, uh, and harmony of everything that's been built since the Renaissance, mm -hmm. probably someone decided to show off a, a, a di more difficult way to, to build a jacket. The, there is no real yeah. function to the way Florentine tailoring is is built. It's just more difficult. Uh, and um, but I love the story. I mean, I love the story that you know Loris represented somehow in a, a bloodline of of Florentine tailoring. And uh, this construction is so unseen around the world. If it wasn't for or perhaps Liverano, uh, nobody would know about it. Um, yeah. So um, it so, was yeah. it was a nice story, nice venture. Plus, it was a tailor, my tailor, that wanted to retire. So I I thought it, you know, all the elements pointed to one direction. So I figured out yeah. let's let's do it. It has been I, I, way harder than what I thought it would be. Yeah. No, but um, no, an amazing, an amazing project. A little bit self-serving since you're uh, you're preserving it for yourself as well. But what what struck me when when I was speaking with him um, last year was uh, was you know that he was saying, in a in a in a beautiful city like Florence, you can't help but be um, inspired when every day just walking down the street, you're surrounded by by this beauty and and history and uh, and artistry. You can't help but be inspired by all of that. Yeah, I agree with you. It's um, and I and I can even more so after traveling extensively for for the last uh, seven eight years. Uh, I must say that Florence has a combination of elements that makes it uh, really unique. And the the word that I can easily uh, put first in the description of the city is harmony. Um, and it and it's hard to explain, uh, but it's it's about balance. And it's it's about like, proportions. Uh, I, I will tell you, Rome is grand. I love Rome. It's spectacular, uh, and spectacular and grand are the first word that come to my mind when it comes to when it comes to describing Florence. I would say beautiful and harmonious. So <clears throat> I was talking with Lois um, and. You know, trying to translate uh, what he knows, because he knows, period. He never had to formalize a, you know, a, a mission, a business plan. Uh, yeah. He always, he was always a tailor. So it is what he is. Um, while we had to mutually and mutually understand each other in, in what we wanted to accomplish, not only for the bespoke, it obviously was, was his, uh, his, thing, uh, but for the made to order, made to measure, the ready to wear. Uh, so balance and harmony in his words, not in my words, uh, we're, we're, we're coming over and over again in the description of what, what he saw in his jacket. Um, so I think it's, it's a good probably approach if you will ask me what's the house style. It's something very understated. Uh, and yet harmonious and balanced. It, it doesn't want to be noticed. It, it doesn't want to be seen, but it, it's there and, and, and you see it. Um, 
and, and it's again it, i think it reflects the attitude of of the, of the entire city uh, and as a as a fact of if you uh, if you if you translate this to a different accent and you go to naples you see more flamboyan attitude in the clothing itself in and um and i see it it reflects the personality the tailoring reflects the personality of the of the city and the region okay yeah absolutely um back to back to stefano stefano bima um you know and and we've got uh, some obviously some beautiful examples of uh, of the work right behind you uh, right behind you there and yeah we'd love to um take a little uh, little look around at some point but um but for, but for those who who may not be uh, familiar with with Stefano Bima you know what um what sets that shoemaker apart from uh, from others you know what what is it that uh, that has uh, caused so many uh, so many men to become devotees of uh, Stefano Bima's uh, shoes that's a, that's a complicated question um well there is quality and that and i take it for granted right it, it, it's uh the obsession with uh, with quality has been one of the uh elements that brought stefano to the uh reputation that he built uh over his uh, uh 29 years of uh, of activity um so i take quality and craftsmanship uh for for I don't want to say for granted the refinement of the craftsmanship though uh is a deliberate decision um there are um dialects in shoemaking um as there are in in in, in tailoring uh that are translated in in the product um Japanese makers for instance uh are perfect to almost too perfect uh, yeah. i i i'm i'm a big admirer of uh, yohei fukuda's work and yeah. some of his shoes are sculptures that i may want to buy and leave there because they're perfect they, they don't want to make me use them um right. yeah. there are other shoemakers uh that are obviously uh well known uh, when i was younger lattanzi here in italy was was a very famous one and he is rough around the edges the stitches are are big and strong and uh, uh, you see it the accent is not of the of the refined modern city the accent is the of the of the almost of the countryside but it mm. it's a flashy roughness you want you want the roughness to be seen uh stefano went for a in between he w- always wanted okay. his shoes to be perfect meaning no roughness in it uh but at the same time easy enough that you could see yourself using them not admiring them um that's what also brought him to investigating and and digging into other materials he was one of the first to use uh shark and elephant uh hippo uh, materials that are strong uh tough uh so you look at them and you're not afraid of of scratching them you're not afraid of not use you're not afraid of again uh creasing mm, it's yeah. a, it's a thing that you want to enjoy uh, yeah. which is my philosophy as well whatever you invest your time energies and money uh on use it uh enjoy it because that's what it's made for i mean owning uh it's it's never the way I have friends that you know buy things like a new, a new watch and just put it in the safe and never use it again. It's like so what's the point? You just own it. You you th- th- where's the pleasure? Uh and I've always been a, a big uh fan of maybe delaying uh the enjoyment if you have to like with wine for instance. Mm, sure. But for God's sake, use it. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, no. If you you uh, the if if you're not if you have a car and you're not driving it or if uh if you have a beautiful crystal uh tumbler and you're not using that when you're drinking whiskey um you know, what shame, what is right? what is the point of having these things what what is and the and even point? more so when quality is part of the performance of the mm. good meaning in in as a piece of clothing that doesn't really fit you well doesn't hurt you doesn't mm. harm uh yeah. pair of shoes 
that that fit you badly, they will hurt. But if they're really good, they will be your favorite shoes. The quality will come out over time. That's why you need to order I mean, and, and use them uh, as, as much as you can. Uh, when I have the chance, you know, clients are ordering shoes for the wedding, I always try to steer a little bit towards a pair of shoes that they will be wearing again. Because if it's for one day, you just buy it per you know, a pair of shoes that are cheaper and dump them as soon as you're done. <laughs> mm. Yeah, precisely. It's, it's interesting. I, in the conversation I was having um, yesterday for, uh, for some reason, it, it, we were talking about the clothing that we wear whilst, you know, doing stuff like this or having uh, Zoom television. You know, you, you must have spent a lot of time over the last few months on, uh, on uh, you know, teleconferencing, having these conversations. Yep. Um, from home and you know you can kind of you don't necessarily need to have have shoes on while you're uh, while you're doing that but uh, but chris uh, the gentleman i was speaking with yesterday was saying no 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 you know i i'm, I'm always at home i've got some um you know whether it's a pair of velvet slippers or uh, or you know something of of that nature on and the example that that i raised was i'd, I'd read an interview with with tom ford at some point last year, where he said he could he could never imagine negotiating with someone um, or you know having a serious business conversation whilst wearing a pair of sneakers because his that that the, the feeling even even if someone couldn't see it and I think you know that would be the case often with with you know or mostly with these sorts of conversations is no one can see it I, but I there's something about more. having your foot there's something about having your foot in in that that kind of uh, I I don't know you know would you agree? Absolutely, I mean I can't agree more. I mean I've obviously done uh, um, quite a few zooming and, and and Google meeting and I've done them all uh, for different yeah. reasons. I mean obviously uh, not as not only pleasure like this and having a conversation with a friend, but but also many yeah. business meetings. Uh, and I do believe that I could be. Obviously, on on my on my PJ, and then nobody would mm. know. Uh, I mean, just wear a jacket, and nobody see your sweatpants underneath. Uh, but it's a shield and an armor that gives you the attitude that you need for that specific moment. Um, yeah. If this is who you are, I mean, and it's not made up. Uh, this is who you need to be when it comes to uh, doing what you do. Mm -hmm. um, the, for the same reason that I cannot lay on the couch in the evening and watch a movie in my blazer and my loafers. I, it's just not the right fit <laughs> for, for movie night. So uh, there, there's a moment for everything and I can't agree more. I, I could not be in a meeting, any kind of meeting, uh, unless I am in my everyday business attire. Yeah. And, and you, as a uh, as a leader, as a as a CEO, um, is that something you know something you've endeavoured to to maintain um, your usual kind of appearance in your in your remote dealings with uh, with your staff over the last few months? Yeah, no, I, 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 I was saying um, as not at all, not at all. As as a as a as a leader, you know, just when you're um, conversing with your uh, with your team, with your staff, um, once again, you know, would, have you been making an effort to kind of throw on a jacket and maybe even a tie and uh, and kind of look the part, despite the fact that you're sitting around at home. Um, yes, uh, not a tie. I mean, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I, you can you can count uh, on two hands the number of days that I wear a tie during a year. Not because I don't like them, but for some reason I love them on people. And when when it's on me, I I don't feel myself. Uh, I feel a little different. Yeah. I, I don't know, but I love them, and I and re and I have a collection of them. It's it's such a such a shame. Um, but I yeah. do make a point of setting. An example in motivating people in, in the right direction. So especially in a moment like the pandemic, uh, laying back too much uh, could have been misinterpreted, meaning 
desperation uh, can lead to negligence, and I and I didn't want to look neither a negligent or or desperate, and we were just facing the situation uh, all together. And I mm. and of course, even even I have even higher responsibility towards them. So um, yeah, I, I I do believe in in setting that the tone and, and and leading forward with the right attitude. Um, and um, and it's refreshing. And I must say that um, also that changing, you know, from the uh, the I'm off mode to uh, I'm back on, mm-hmm. uh, it, it it makes a lot of difference. And I. And I do think that people notice your attitude uh, as well. I don't think they would take me seriously if I walk in in, in sweatpants and a t-shirt. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, yeah, that's that's interesting that you know throwing on a garment can can help flick that mental switch and uh, yeah uh, change your your approach to uh, to what you're doing. I'm I'm curious as a um, as a as a CEO, you know, I've, I've been reading in a lot of the more the, the sort of uh, the business papers that uh, a lot of C-suite uh, executives have been saying that um, they're working harder than ever and they're finding, um, you know, the, the work from home and this period dealing with this with this crisis has been much harder, much harder work. Um, you know, while, while some people think, oh, you're working from home, it must be easier. Um, it's been much harder work. Have, have you found that to be the case, that this has been uh, one of the hardest periods? Absolutely. Well, for, for different reasons. One, it, mm-hmm. it, is, it is a harder period. I mean, uh, there, there's no question that, you know, the, the times are harsh and uh, extreme measures have to be taken and a change is in progress regardless of, uh, of how good or solid the business uh, is or was before the pandemic. Uh, so obviously, besides the managing the day-to-day business, there's a, there's a new projects to evaluate, new strategies to build. So uh, I've been adding work to to my daily schedule. Uh, yeah. And this morning, coming to work in the in the car, I was saying how I did enjoy working from home, just because it really gave me the chance to focus more on things. Uh, obviously, when when you come to work, there's there's 15 of us roughly uh, in this building, uh, and there's four companies. So the, there's there's always someone that kind of needs to ask uh, or 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 needs your attention for a minute. So uh, focusing and concentration um, in this environment is is a little more difficult. Uh, there's more teamwork, uh, so I'm really productive on the teamwork side. But but when I, when it needs to uh, when I need to zoom in and really uh, get something done, I, I, I need to isolate myself a little more. Um, so I, I enjoyed the, the possibility that I got at home uh, to just do my own thing uh, mm. at my own pace and in my own time. Um, the risk has been that because I did enjoy it, I didn't think it was extra work, it turned out to be something I do every day so uh, even if i'm off on a saturday or a sunday uh, unless my daughter wants to do something with me i ended up like working just because it was natural it became natural uh so not only i've added work but i had found more occasion of, of working and uh yes but i don't think i've ever worked this hard uh in my life yeah it's it's incredible isn't it um yeah you you, you were saying it's it's been um, it's been kind of nice to be to be in Florence for an extended period of time. You know, I know you you travel um, extensively uh, around the world in you know representing Stefano Bima. Um, has it been good to just be you know uh, to have that pressure off you where you have no choice but to uh, but to stay in Florence? And uh, um, it's certainly it's not the worst city in the world to be. Uh, to be stuck in, as we were saying, it is, uh, you know, it's somewhere where hundreds of thousands of people come every year as tourists. So you're, uh, you're kind of a, um, yeah, you're in a very enviable uh, environment. But has that been nice? Uh, really, really nice. Um, for different reasons. Uh, first of all, I always complain I don't enjoy my city and my home uh, enough. I'm always on the go. And even the feeling of 
being here, but knowing you're living in, a, in about like 10 days, two weeks or whatever it is, it's like that feel that you have your luggage ready and you yeah. don't, um, so for once, because I was forced to be here, uh, you know, luggage went, went bad in the basement, which, you know, it's been a while since it's been, it's set in the basement no. for months. Um, yeah. Also, the alternative, I mean, the other city where I spend a lot of time is, is New York, where we have our, our uh, shop and showroom. Mm. And New York obviously has been hit even harder than, than Italy, as, you, as we all obviously know. Uh, so now that I know what happens in, in New York, I'm, I'm kind of glad I got stuck here. But I really <clears throat> got here, I think the very last minute that you were still like allowed to travel, I was in New York until March 6th. And I remember coming back to friends. I, I, I connected and there were like five people on the plane from Paris to Florence. And I think like three days later, they closed the airport in Florence. So um, yeah, I got stuck here and I'm lucky I did. Yes, yes, very enviable location to be stuck in. Um, well, Tommaso, we're kind of uh, running out of time. Someone, someone had a question of whether your um, whether the shoemaking course in August would still be uh, still be going ahead. Um, will that be the case? Say it again. Sorry. Uh, well, one of one of the viewers had a question asking whether your uh, your shoemaking course in August would still be uh, still be going ahead. Yes, um, for different reasons, I'm motivated to 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 have it done. First of all, I want to make it up to those that had to leave, and I want to complete their training. Uh, second of all, it is the mm -hmm. there's there are changes in, in progress. One is uh, um, that the the digit digitalization. Sorry, I mean the we we want to bring the some of the training in a digital world. So we will use the intake in, uh, in August in a very reduced. <clears throat> Uh, version only probably six students allowed uh, to film and shoot all the all the process and all the techniques and edit so that we will have content that will be used uh, will be used to train uh, with an a hybrid idea of a blend of digital online uh, and physical in Florence training uh, to reduce the amount of uh, of time that a student uh, must spend in Florence unless they can, of mm. course, because one of the one of the, the things that we've noticed is, is that Florence is it's not cheap. It's not, it's not expensive either. But again, uh, committing to be away from your home and, and from your country for six months, uh, staying in Florence, living on your own is a huge commitment. And there are many students that unfortunately can't make it, not because of the fee of the class, but be because of the cost of the overall project. So I'm trying to uh, analyze the possibility of uh, creating content that can prepare them to the work that gets done here uh, so that they can limit their time in Florence by self-training them through our tutorials. Uh, mm. So the intake in August is, is particularly important for us because we're going to have a crew filming at, at all times for the entire six months. Um, it's a um, it's a okay. big project, but I do believe that again, the future is in it's in digital, and, and we need to go that route. That's that's amazing. So you're going to commit the whole process to a um, uh, to a video um, based uh, that that that, uh, that can be remotely learned from um, on an ongoing basis, or uh, or, is, or is this going to be a documentary? Or uh... no, 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 no. It's an online online training, um, digital training, e-learning, if yeah. you want to call it this way. Yeah. Uh, as part of a of a specific mission, uh, not replacing the the full training that you can get here, but as an option if you can't commit to the full six months in Florence training. Okay, I mean we're we're really learning um, the 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 breadth of things that we can do remotely and via um, via digital now, aren't we? Um, yeah. It's, uh, kind of been forced to, but uh, but yeah, it's amazing the things that we can. That we can do. Um, my friend Josh here is asking, "What is on my feet?" I'm afraid I am barefoot. I am doing this in a uh, 
in a newscaster style. I've, I've got my shorts on the, uh, the lower half, so uh, I won't be revealing anything from, uh, from there down. But Tommaso, uh, perhaps you could take us around the, uh, the newly, uh, newly renovated uh, shop and give us a, a little bit, of a, bit of a look around. That would Absolutely. be wonderful. I'll take you around. Thank you. Um, so you, uh, it's lunchtime, so uh, they are all on break, but like I said, for Kumiko, son, it's, uh, it's in there. As you can see, we respect the, the uh, advice of wearing masks at all time, although I must say that we're mm -hmm. so... We're so connected as a team here that if one of us had it now, we'll all be, all be sick. Um, um, I'll take a chance to show you also the workshop for um, yeah. Mistrucci, because obviously one of the ideas, well, the main idea that I had uh, to uh, bring the two experiences together was to make room in this building for Mistrucci, as opposed to being in the separate workshop that you had seen uh, in Via Maggio. So uh, the mm. workshop for the tailoring moved uh, back here. Very good. And yeah. uh, it's also easier to have everyone under the same roof. It's, you know, the, the kind of control that you, that you can have over, over things. Uh... So that, that's, the main, the main goal. So everything that was back in the room that you have just seen was the cutting and, and leather storage was the shoe shine process. Everything has been moved to another building that it's uh, five minutes away from here. Um, okay. And, uh, and then we dedicated the first floor that uh, you, you remember th this wasn't here. So now I'm, I'm stepping up no. a stair that didn't exist. So we created this access to the higher floors. Um, and, uh, so the first floor is it's become uh, our you know fitting room if you want if you want. So this is the fitting room for everything. Of course, we hang more clothing than. Uh, Unplug it. Okay, um, so this uh, it, it's the the space where we receive clients when we will be able to receive clients again, uh, okay, yes. and <laughs> and uh, and upstairs where this where the training used to be. Uh, so this is a <laughs> she, and she's showing you the the window we opened on the on the ground floors so we can uh, we can still oh, feel and. And, 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 you know, see them and feel that we're together. I, I do believe in yeah. open spaces, so I try to open as much as I, as I could. Uh, but, uh, you know, this You just this have to be sure so that the... young ladies in, in skirts don't walk across that. <laughs> yeah. Well, there aren't many young ladies shopping for shoes or men's tailoring anyways. <laughs> okay. Very good. That's and lucky. And upstairs, That's if, you, if we want to try a last... Uh, a last uh, fly upstairs. Upstairs mm -hmm. is. Uh, I'm sorry, it's messy. I mean, we it, we weren't supposed to walk around, and and I'm as you know as you know me well enough. I think uh, you can you know I'm spontaneous enough, so we didn't set up oh, no. for for showing the <laughs> the space today. Which it, it's just happening as we go. And uh, oh no. Yeah, you can say so. Okay, so we have some polishing up here too. But normally, this is our office. <laughs> okay, this is our uh, office space. Uh, but again, I get they they heard they couldn't or make too much noise, so they came, they came upstairs. Well, I I very much look forward to uh, the next visit. Uh, hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. I, I've heard that PT Womo is uh, is confirmed for September. I believe uh, probably. so. Yeah. yeah. She's an I interesting. So. I was I was talking with Agostino Poletto of uh, PT Margin just the other day, and he uh, he's not just moving PT Womo to uh, to September. He's thinking of a different concept. 
Hmm. Uh, big change, big deal. But I think okay. the industry needed, needed a change. I don't think the, the method worked anymore of uh, the, the six months delay of uh, collections. I don't think it was a method that, that would work anymore. Yeah. And everyone was ready with two collections anyways. So um, yeah. it, it, it will be interesting. Uh, yeah, there's, it's there's a, change a lot of, lot in of everything. broken systems that need changing. Yeah. Yep, nothing will remain yeah, the same. I think so. I think that, that could be the, the silver lining that comes out of all of this. But, uh, Motivation. It's we, all, uh, you know, there's, a, there's a saying in Florence. We say, il bisognino fa trottare la vecchia, which means that the old lady runs when she needs to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, very poetic. You know, we found a need uh, and we're all like, you know, rearranging our, ourselves and our ways uh, to, uh, to be better at what we do or find new ways of doing what we want to do. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, Tommaso, uh, Inst Instagram will cut us off in a, in a couple of minutes. So uh, I probably should take this opportunity to, uh, to wish you farewell. Um, but it's been, it's been wonderful speaking with you. I can't wait until uh, until I can make it back to Firenze and uh, and pay you a visit in uh, in person um, and uh, and see this beautiful uh, beautiful new premises that you've just shown us around. Uh, but look, I, I really appreciate you taking uh, a whole hour of your time to uh, to chat with me today and uh, and thank you to everyone who's uh, who's watched. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. I uh, hope it worked finally. This is the first actually live Instagram thing that I that I do and I and it's kind of good because I don't see myself <laughs> otherwise yeah. I'm always concerned about how, I, how I'm looking or at what I'm doing in video so this is even you, perfect. You, whoever is filming it for you has got you beautifully beautifully framed you're uh, you've looked terrific throughout um no look I, I just started I did my first one of these um someone invited me um uh, on theirs only about a month ago now and uh, and I thought you know I've got some time. Why don't I? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, Absolutely. I'm, uh, yeah. And this is not you know, the funny. The funny part is that I, I've been talking about like, oh, we have to produce content to show what we do because really, like, shoes are are nice and clothing is nice, quality is known, but showing what you do on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, like showing the the, the you know the insider of of, mm. a, of a workshop. I think it's interesting to people. It's just we never really had time. Now we, we got time and uh, it's good that we're motivated to it. Yeah, well, no, that's, uh, I've always believed that's, that's the way that you, um, that you get your customer or your audience to appreciate what goes into making um, something that's truly extraordinary, whether it's, whether it's food or drink or uh, a car or a, a jacket or a pair of shoes or um, you name it, you know, you've got to, you've got to show that passion and that, um, that craftsmanship that's going into it. But uh, Absolutely. yes, always uh, very evident with you. Uh, I'm being told we're going to be cut off in two minutes. So uh, All right. Tommaso, once again, um, molto grazie. And uh, I hope to see you again soon. Take care. I'm waiting. Ciao. Thank you, sir. Ciao, ciao. Bye.